thank you for your continued leadership and community relation. Uh, Council, largest Muslim organization, we thank you for the uh, opportunity to work with you on Interfaith Advisory Committee, uh, Police Reform Subcommittee, and Chicago Police Department, Department of uh, Community Policing. And we'd love to continue partnership with the city and with you, Mayor. And we want to welcome you. And with no, we have only a few minutes left before we break the first. But before we do that, we'd like to hear from you. Please join me in welcoming Mayor. Mm -hmm. Mayor. everyone for, for being here on a supportive occasion. Thank you, Brother Khan, for your kind words. Assalamu alaikum. And Ramadan Mubarak. I'm honored to be here on the 19th day of fasting in the holy month of Ramadan. I'd also like to thank the, the Council of, of Islamic Organizations of Greater Chicago for hosting this event here um, at the esteemed Muslim Community Center of Chicago uh, for hosting um, this gathering and it's important uh, breaking of the fast. As you all know, but it bears repeating, for 53 years and counting, the Muslim Community Center of Chicago has served as our great city and the incredible, vibrant Muslim communities that call it home. This Ramadan certainly carries a different energy than the past couple of years with our post-pandemic recovery finally in sight. And people now being able to gather safely to celebrate with their families, friends, and community, and spiritually rejuvenate themselves. And I'm sure we all remember when the pandemic first struck our city, houses of worship were asked to close their doors in order to save lives. And that's not something that any of us were who made those decisions entered into lightly. As a person of faith myself, I know how important it is for us to be able to gather and be together in community because faith isn't just about the reading of the, of the holy book or hearing the sermons from our religious leaders. It's about a sense of community and being together. And that's hard to replicate virtually. So it was a very big and momentous occasion that we ask the members of the faith community in our city to please help us save lives by staying home. The council and the Muslim Community Center of Chicago stepped up immediately to help people comply with COVID-19 protocols, as well as assist those in need. And the needs were great, particularly in the early days of the pandemic. Food distribution, making sure that our vulnerable residents were taken care of and not isolated during this time. Educating communities about the ever-changing dynamics of the virus. And the work didn't stop there. When we finally had access to life-saving vaccine, this center stood up and hosted vaccine drives in this very space, a trusted space in this community, which is so incredibly important. As Dr. Khan said, many people were very hesitant. And the way that we were able to break through and get people the life-saving vaccine is with trusted spaces, with trusted leaders. And this center was crucial to those efforts in our city. And for that, we are incredibly grateful. Now, two years later, now, two years later, you are all able to pray side by side taking in part in a terror weed and the iftar together in safety. And returning to mosques and community centers all across Chicago and Chicago land to observe this holy month. The simple joy of being able to be together is reflective of the Islamic faith, which teaches its followers, as you know, to be thankful, grateful, and help those in need. This Ramadan, we celebrate Chicago's Muslim community for welcoming Afghan refugee families to their homes. 
And I've been together with many of you at dinners at the airport as we welcome these residents who have come a mighty long way, a leap of faith to come to a land that they may not have known, may have no connection to, but hoping they would be welcomed and embraced. And this community, again, has stood tall to do just that. This includes all the big and small steps to helping families resettle, from finding housing, providing meals, to literally greeting them at the airports and saying, welcome to your new home, and helping them start to build a new life after very traumatic experiences in their home country. I'll always cherish being able to bear witness to the work of this community standing tall to do what is necessary to help the next generation come to Chicago and make it their home. And so thank you very much for all that you continue to do in supporting your community. Because when you support your community, you're supporting Chicago. And you are setting an example for the rest of us to follow about making sure that our faith is borne out in our actions. That is, I think, a universal teaching across various religions. It's not enough to say, I am a person of faith. It's not enough to pray and ask for support and forgiveness and redemption. We have to make sure that our faith is alive in the acts that we do every single day. And I know the people in this community understand that and embrace that with gusto because the work that you do makes a difference in the lives of our residents in our city and the residents of this community. And many of you know that this year is a special one for the council, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary. So congratulations. And as a city, we are proud of how the council has worked hard to advocate for the nearly half million Muslims in the Chicagoland area, helping to keep our communities connected and informed, and providing Chicago's Muslim community with a platform to amplify your voices. It, it is a glorious thing when I think about the long tortured history of many of us, not only just in Chicago, but in the United States. Too many chapters where we, in our own ways, have been denied our full rights as citizens, as people who, who contribute to our communities. And the fact that we are in a different place because of hard work and sacrifice of so many for decades, for decades, is a tremendous testament to the resiliency of this community. And as an African American, I, the, the work that you do, the sacrifice that you've made, and the resiliency of this community really deeply resonates with you. I feel a relationship and a kinship with this community because your struggle is our struggle. And we can never forget that. So tonight's Iftar dinner pays tribute to the council and their predecessors' impactful leadership in building effective relationship with city, state, county, elected officials and institutions. And I know the moments before breaking your fast are precious and important time for prayer. So I pray that you all will continue to have a very blessed Ramadan and wish you an early hour. Thank you so much.